Welcome to Biz Dev Live. I'm so excited to be bringing you Amberly Lago today. She is somebody that has an amazing story. Talk about resilience. Talk about grit. She's an author. She's somebody that you want to know. You want to hear her story. She's somebody that is inspiring. We're going to get into it all after the Biz Dev theme. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, weekdays at 11 Eastern Time, live. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Leadership and motivation, motivation, empathy and inspiration, inspiration. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, business development, not even selling it. Biz D with C, brought to you by Cameron T, Cameron T, Biz D with C. Brought to you by Cameron T. Cameron T. This is business development, not even selling it. Not even selling it, not even selling this it. This is business development, not even selling it. Business development, not even selling it. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. This is business development, not even selling it. So I thank everybody for joining me. I'm going to put Amberly Lago on the screen and read the bio here. Amberly, thanks for being with me. Give me one second here as I get the bio up. Here we go. Amberly Lago is a health and wellness coach, TEDx speaker, podcaster, and a leading expert in the field of resilience and transformation. She is the best-selling author of True Grit and Grace and empowers people around the world by sharing her story, how she turned a tragedy into triumph. Through her book, Coaching Methods and Workshops, she has curated unique tools to teach others how to tap into their superpower of resilience and persevere through any of life's challenges. She offers hope and solutions for anyone like her living in chronic pain to live life to the fullest. Amberly has most recently been featured on NBC's The Today Show, The Doctor's Hallmark, and contributed to magazines such as Shape, Fit Pregnancy, Health, Keynote Speaker Magazine and Disability Magazine. Please welcome to the show the amazing Amberly Lago. Oh, thank you. I'm still kind of jamming out from that intro, the music. <laughs> yeah, everybody, okay. everybody likes the biz dev theme. Thank you for being on the show with me. We got some folks checking in. I want to shout out them. Marcy Jackson checking in. Happy Monday, John. Let us know where you're tuning in from. I always love hearing that. And then if you have questions uh, for Amberly as we go along, more specific, the better. We love questions because if you have the question, inevitably somebody else has the question and we love hearing those and being able to provide uh, value and feedback. So Amberly, with that said, um, talk to us about the, the current services, things that you're doing right now. I know you got the book uh, that is available for folks. Uh, talk to people about what you do and then we'll kind of go into the backstory here. Okay. Well, thank you again for having me here. I'm so excited to get to talk with you again. And I'm also excited that the world is opening up again. And, you know, I'm starting to travel for events, in-person events and get to hug people again. Um, I do a lot of masterminds, so I'm most excited about my Unstoppable Life Mastermind that's just started up this week. Um, but yes, through my coaching, through speaking, through my book, through my workshops and um, in-person retreats. I love to connect with people and any way that I can empower them to really be the best version of themselves. So I think this last event that I was at, I was in Florida and I think I was more grateful for that event to be in person and hug people because it was the first time I've been around so, you know, anybody and hugged them. We're still pretty locked down. I know it doesn't sound like I'm from California. I'm originally from Texas, but in California where we've been so locked down. And so it's so nice to see that, you know, we just got our, you know, mask. We can go out without our mask on. And so it just feels like hope. So it feels good. Yeah. we. I'm in the, the New York area and 
we're just getting to the place where some of the restrictions are coming down. People are feeling more comfortable. I think we've hit that 70% mark, June 2021. So very interesting as the world sort of slowly creeps back to uh, somewhere uh, that feels a little bit more familiar, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I went to the grocery store yesterday and they had taken the plastic uh, divider. I was like, oh my goodness, I can hear you better. I can see your things. <laughs> It, it's 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 a, it's a more comfortable world when we're not afraid of these germs passing uh, and yeah. killing us off and and just just creating all this concern and worry, which is something that we'll be talking about today. You know, I, I think people uh, have had to be resilient uh, mm -hmm. over the last 15, 16 months. People are faced with challenges. People are still faced with challenges. So I, I think this is a very timely topic for so many. Uh, but what, what did little Amberly want to be when she grew up? Because you have an amazing story. We're going to hear about it today for those that haven't heard your story. If you, if you got if you haven't checked out Amberly's TEDx talk on YouTube, you got to go check it out because she's an amazing story. But uh, I know we're going to share some of that today. What did little Amberly want to be when she was growing up and, and how did that change along the way? Oh, well, you know, I think I do something so different. Well, different in that um, I just do it in a different way. But I think that as a little girl, I what I loved most was bringing joy to people and seeing their, you know, their faces light up and them giggle or smile. And how I did that as a kid is I danced and I was a tap dancer and everywhere we would go, my mom would say, Oh, show, give them a tap, show them a tap dance. And, and every Friday night at the Dairy Queen, I would stand on the table and dance like all after the football game, we would all go to the Dairy Queen and I would dance. And so when I, you know, I don't know if you remember when MTV came out and there were music videos, there was this light bulb moment that I thought, wow, I can actually get paid to do something that I love. And so from a very young age, I was eight years old. I thought I'm going to move to Los Angeles and be a professional dancer. And so I worked hard. I was, I practically lived at the dance studio and I knew the only way that I was going to be able to do that is if I saved up enough money um, on my own to go and do that myself. Cause we, ca I came from a big family and my mom and we didn't have, she worked hard, but we didn't have much family. And so I waited tables at this little place in the mall. I, I mean, I started working when I was 13. I taught dance. I was a lifeguard. I babysat and I saved up $1,200, packed up my little Suzuki Samurai and moved cross country. Um, I had told my family I had a partial scholarship to UCLA and I told my family, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go to school. Well, I auditioned for a scholarship program at a place called the Dance Center. And that was my dream to go to school there and just get to dance. And so I got the scholarship program. And a year after being on scholarship, I got an agent and I was doing music videos. I was sponsored by Nike dancing. I was going all, my dream came true. I was in Japan. Um, I was doing industrials and it was just amazing to get to do the things that I loved and that transitioned into fitness. And so I feel like through my dance, through fitness and now through coaching and speaking, I think it's, our purpose is kind of tied back. If you think about what brought you joy as a kid, it's probably really closely connected to your purpose still today. So although now I don't dance for a living, um, I still get to um, bring joy to people in different ways. And so that's, that's kind of the story about how I got to Los Angeles. And now here it is 30 years later and I'm still here. I love that. And I, I think one of the things that hit me when I was watching your TEDx talk was when you said, I lost my joy. I mean, it hit me. And I, because I think so many people are searching for their joy, may not have ever truly found it. And you seem like you were in it, right? You seem like you uh, were in a place where you were happy and then something happened 
and that caused a big change in your life. Can, can you tell us about that and, and kind of what happened and what, what, what created this situation where you lost your joy? Yeah, you know, I think my whole life has, has been about being an athlete. You know, I ran track and, as I said before, danced and then was in the fitness industry. And I was doing, you know, infomercials for Body by Jake. I don't know if you remember Body by Jake, but he's still out there doing it. I, I do. I do remember those. Yeah. Um, life was good. I think, you know, for for me, Running was my therapy. It was my drug of choice. That's what I did for fun. A lot of people, you know, go shopping or they go to eat or I don't know what they do for fun, but that running was what I did for fun. And so I was on my way home from work on my motorcycle on a Friday afternoon and an SUV pulled out of a parking lot. They hit me. I got T-boned. I was thrown 30 feet. And as I'm sliding across the asphalt, I was just thinking, please don't let another car hit me because I couldn't quite tell where I was going or what I was sliding, if I was sliding into oncoming traffic. The first thing I did was look down at my leg and it was just broken into pieces. Mm -hmm. And I felt like my leggings were the only thing that was holding my leg on my body. So I was screaming, call 911. I got rushed to the hospital. And when I woke up from a coma, I learned I had a 1% chance of saving my leg from amputation. Wow. And that was really devastating to, to wake up. And, you know, it was my livelihood being an athlete. Um, it, that's what brought me joy. That was kind of my, the only tool in my toolbox as far as getting through anxiety or fear or sadness was I would run. And so, so to think of that being taken away, um, I hung on to that 1% though. That's what I thought. If you said there's 1% chance, there's still a chance. And so that was really my glimmer of hope that got me through what totaled uh, and I counted every one of them, 34 surgeries, um, months in the hospital, but it was really um, a year and a half out of work. And so I think a lot of us, you know, over the past over a year during the pandemic, a lot of us have lost our jobs. A lot of us have seen some scary times, fear, uncertainty, uncertainty and anxiety. And so I have learned through one of the most difficult times of my life how to get through challenges. And so it's my, really my purpose and my passion to share ways to do that with others now. But there was a time, yeah, my hope, um, I was in a dark place. I didn't have much hope. I had lost my, jo my joy. Um, and it was just a really difficult time. And so if there's anybody here listening right now that's going through a challenge, I want you to know that transformation is possible and hope is available. And the more we reach out and we share what we're going through and um, we come together, we can get through those times. And I know sometimes it's hard to see when we're deep in adversity or going through a challenge that there is a blessing in it. There is a lesson. Um, there is something good that comes out of it. I know that's hard sometimes when we're in the middle of adversity, but there is a way through and there are most certainly gifts in every, you know, challenge or adversity. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I, I know particularly important for our times. We're sort of getting towards the end of the pandemic now, but so many people have been through this, this just densely adverse time for so many people, for so many businesses, for so many families, uh, for so many relationships. Uh, we were talking about uh, just before we jumped on today, me having a, a fairly minor knee surgery. I can't imagine having 34 surgeries. It was such a big deal just having the one, but being prepped over and over again, um, not being done. Right. I mean, I think, that, I think just that idea alone, we've, we've sort of dealt with that on the COVID thing. I think most people, as we were jumping into this 2020, uh, April, you're saying, OK, a few months from now, we'll be back to normal. And then we weren't. And then a few months later, we still weren't. Right. But that idea 
of just not being done with something, getting yourself mentally motivated. All right, this is it. And then I'm right. And then you're getting back into that dark place again, because you just know you're not done. It's not completed. There's more work to do. And then forget about the the leg, the surgery. There's, there's the rest of life going on and you're feeling like you can't do the things that you want to do in this world. Now you've moved from a place where you lost your joy with, with dancing. And I, I think you found joy in other places, right? You found a way to do it. So now what does Amberly want to do? What kind of impact are you trying to make on the world? Well, you know, um, it, technology, all of this is new to me, right? Like this, I mean, to be, completely transparent. I'm just like, what is the app? How do you do this? I mean, four years ago, I didn't even own a computer. Mm. Um, I, so Zoom and StreamYard and Calendly links and, and I didn't know how to even attach a picture to an email because my whole world was living. I, you know, I was on the dance floor and then I lived my life on the gym floor and all my business was referral. It was all word of mouth. And so, you know, I had, I could live in, in a very physical world. Yeah, it, it was, it was very physical. And I remember, um, I remember being home. I got home from the hospital and I was sitting in bed. I had a hospital bed downstairs cause I, I couldn't even stand. So, I mean, to go from being this athlete and active to laying in a bed with bed sores, not even being able to use the bathroom on my own. I had to use a bedpan, which was very humbling, a humbling experience. Um, and a friend of mine that I worked with, she came over and she said, um, she said, well, what are you going to do now? You can't be a trainer anymore. And I just burst into tears mm. and I was so I was so, you know, working so hard just to get through a day by day, just trying to do things um, like stand up or um, basic bait, just trying to get through the day of pain um, that I hadn't thought about. Well, what am I going to do next? And I think that it can get a bit overwhelming. Um, you know, if I would have known in the very beginning when they said we're going to have to amputate your leg, if they would have said you're going to have. 34 surgeries, I probably would have been like, you know what, let's just amputate. That's too mm. hard. I give up. Um, and it kind of like in the pandemic, had I known in the very beginning that this was going to be over a year that we're going to have to wear these masks, that we're going to be inside. Well, first of all, I would have gone to the store and bought dumbbells right away because <laughs> who knew the gym would be closed that long. I mean, mm. I was, I was doing everything I could to stay fit, including like picking up my 13 year old, to, you know, to do squats while I was holding her and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, I think that it's really important to have to have big goals and big dreams. But I think it's so important to really focus on one day at a time, one step at a time and celebrate your small victories along the way. And that's how I got through just getting through surgery after surgery after surgery was I would think about what can I do today to, to make today a better day. And so, um, you know, it can be overwhelming uh, living with chronic pain. So I still live with chronic pain. I was diagnosed with a nerve disease called complex regional pain syndrome. And so it's dubbed the suicide disease because it's ranked highest on the pain scale. There's no known cure. So basically, you're in pain all the time. It's, it's ranked higher than passing a kidney stone. It's ranked higher than amputation, actually. Um, it hurts worse than having a baby. And so when you're, when you're in a flare up that it's ranked like over a 10 on the pain scale that, I mean, it goes off the charts. And so a lot of people, the reason it's dubbed the suicide disease is because a lot of people, when they find out they have this disease, um, and it's the rest of their life that, you know, you're going to be in pain that they slowly kill themselves with drugs or alcohol or, or pills, um, just trying to, to numb out the pain 
or they think I can't live with this and they kill themselves, which I'm so trying to help people get through the pain. And so for me, I think that um, I'm passionate about helping those that are in pain to turn the pain to purpose because pain is pain. Whether, you know, you had your meniscus tear and you had your surgery, surgery, surgery. Uh, we all have pain, whether it's emotional pain, the pain from losing our business or losing a loved one, um, God forbid. Uh, pain is pain. And so I'm very passionate about helping people move through pain. and. It takes so much resilience every single day, whether, you know, we're reinventing ourselves, whether we're moving through challenging times, whether you're trying to figure out technology like me. Um, it's it's learning something new. And so I'm going to tell you right now, if I can. I bought the computer, went to the Apple store, you know, Mac store, took a class on how to do things. I hand wrote 80%, maybe 90% of my book, typed it up, found a publisher, figured out how to do social media in a way that I was able to sell out of books across the country. And I can do all of that while living with pain. I'm telling you, anybody out there struggling right now and they're trying to decide if they want to write a book or they want how to reinvent themselves, I'm telling you it's possible. Um, all you need to do is think of why it is that you're so passionate about the thing that you want to do. And when you know your why, you can figure out almost any how. I'm sitting here writing down notes so I can't oh. push my buttons. I, I love that. And I, and I want to shout out Marcy Jax. First of all, very important. She says, yes, I still have Body by Jake CDs, right? That, uh, <laughs> and secondly, awesome. she says, thank you, Amberly, for the message. I needed to hear this today. Today was my day one for my 2190 rule, 30 minutes and exercise for 21 days. And I, I was thinking about that as you were talking about, you know, different challenges that people are facing and just you know, I was, I was spend the day with my father yesterday. Uh, today is June 21st. Yes, it was June 20th, 2021. It's Father's Day yesterday. And I was spending the day. So happy Father's Day to all the, the fathers out there. I was spending the day with my dad. And, uh, you know, he's he's got some, some health issues and he's a little overweight. And, you know, I'm thinking about ways to help him and, and shift his mindset on exercise. Like so many of us out here, I battle and had my own battles with we were talking about the difficulty i was like my, my knee was hurting so i wasn't using my arms to exercise i was as pay attention as you were saying getting dumbbells because the gyms were closed it's it's such a, a challenge for so many to, to stay fit right uh, mary jones says thank you for this i suffered 10 years from ra and could not take meds and i'm not in remission taking natural now and i think she's saying i am now in remission taking natural products mary jones thanks for, for letting us know i mean so many people are battling pain and challenges on so many fronts so i think your message is is great for so many because the idea, and I know you have your your PACER acronym, which I, I love, uh, but that perspective thing, when you know that there's so many people that are, are challenged on so many different fronts and your challenge, although it can seem overwhelming in the moment, in the scheme of things, right, there's, there's always somebody that's battled through worse and that mindset, the power of our our abilities, right? There's people that go through just just crushing diseases, crushing challenges from birth. You know, a lot of times, especially for those that are citizens of the United States, we've, we've almost, in so many different cases, won the 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 lottery just just by where we were born and who we were born to, right? And so, I I love the perspective piece of this. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the the Pacer acronym? Uh, yeah, you know, perspective is something that, well, it's the quickest and easiest way to change the way you feel about your situation. And um, I'm so grateful to hear from so many people that are checking in. And I'm happy to hear that um, you are treating with, I think it was Mary who's treating her rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. um, natural supplements. I love hearing. And she made the correction. She said she is now in remission. So we got that right. So she's. Oh, she's that's even better. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. You're in 
permission. I mean, that's amazing for, you know, for me, I had to really learn to get my mindset right because I had spiraled into a depression. I mean, I was really in a dark place. And when I say dark place, I went from having this huge life with a lot of clients and a lot of friends. And I went to a place where my world got smaller and smaller because I didn't want people to know how bad I felt, the pain that I was in. And I didn't want to share I guess my vulnerabilities because I felt like it made me seem less than or, or or weak and actually it led me to my strengths. And so I had to get my mindset right around so many different things. I was so caught up in comparing myself to what I used to look like, what I used to be able to do. Um, I was thinking, you know, is my husband ever going to love me? Again, I can't do the things that I used to do. I'm scarred from the hip down. My leg is deformed. Um, I'll never do fitness videos again. You know, one of the doctors had told me, well, you'll never wear shorts again because of all your scars. And, you know, you'll probably never be able to run again. And at first that really felt like a kick in the gut. But that has been one of my most motivating moments because it made me think, you know what, I am going to work so hard. And that's what I think we all realize. We have to like take a good hard look at where we are and where we want to go and think of different ways of how we're going to get there. And so that was a motivating moment for me. And um, it, I went, instead of going home and getting back in my wheelchair, I went straight to physical therapy and I told the therapist, he's like, Amberly, what are you doing here? You do not have an appointment today. I was at physical therapy so much that they actually gave me a key to the facility that I still have the key to the facility. Wow. And I told him, I said, I just learned something and I'm going to have to work harder than I've ever worked before if I want to have the life that I've always imagined. And to be honest, I didn't know how hard that was going to be because I didn't know that, you know, how hard living with chronic pain every day can be. And my husband one night at the dinner table and and again, we talked a little bit before we started the show, but happy Father's Day to you and all all the the dads out there. Um, You know, I'm married to such an incredible man and. I know he worries about me sometimes because I do love what I do and I tend to push myself pretty hard. And we were sitting at the dinner table one night and he said, you know what? You really have to pace yourself. And I was like, I do pace myself. And I started and I don't know if I was trying to prove to him that I paced myself or I was really trying to figure out all the things that I do throughout the day that allow me to be resilient. And I came up with PACER, which stands for perspective, acceptance, community, endurance, and rest. And the first part of PACER is perspective, which we were just talking about. And the way, the quickest way for me or for you to shift your perspective is to get grateful. So the moment I wake up in the morning, I say a prayer for what I'm grateful for. I have an accountability partner. So every morning I write down in my journal what I'm grateful for, but then it's so important to express gratitude. And so the way I do that is I reach out to my friend every morning. I share three things that I'm grateful for. And when you can express what you're grateful for, it instantly gets you focused on what you can do instead of what you can't do and, and really what you do have instead of what you don't have. And so sometimes the quickest way to shift your perspective is to think about how worse it could be. So, you know, just the other day, um, I have to admit like this is so shallow uh, and so silly of me, but you know, I was doing this photo shoot and we couldn't wear shoes in the house. And I looked at my foot and I was really embarrassed of, you know, my foot's deformed, my toes have metal in them, my ankles fused. And I was like, Oh, my foot's so deformed. I hope they don't get my foot in the picture. And, and then I look over at the makeup artist and she was missing her toes. And I thought, wow, 
isn't that a perspective shift? Here I am feeling this way and kind of complaining for the way my foot look. At least I have a foot. At least I have my toes. And so mm. I think that sometimes um, if we think of, you know, some of the hardest moments we've ever been through and how we made it through those moments. And, and for me, I think about when I'm complaining about it hurts to walk. I think there were times I was stuck in the hospital bed and I couldn't walk. So I better be grateful that I have the ability to walk. So I think it's really important to shift your perspective through gratitude, through thinking about how far you've come or, or how worse that it could be. I love that too. And I, I think, you know, obviously pain is not necessarily a positive thing, but pain is also a reminder, a reminder that we're alive, a reminder that we're here. You know, it's, it's, it, it's a little bit dark to talk about, but you know, the moment you are not feeling something, pain included, you're not alive, right? And so just the understanding that if you're there, you have something that so many, you know, would be giving their all, right? For those that are in those situations where they have moments and minutes and hours and days and months to live, you're in a position, if you're not in that position, um, that is probably something that would be very sought after for so many. So it's that perspective thing that, you know, I think it's, it's, lets you stop feeling sorry for yourself and lets you feel like, man, I can do this, right? I can get it. And you talk about that so much in shifting the mindset. Um, I want, I want to jump into our, our, our takeaways uh, for a day because you, you talk about building grit to get through adversity. I think that's, this is part of it, right? This idea of, of the perspective piece, but how do you build grit? Uh, and I think that's particularly important for now. I mean, folks, the opportunity, I think, in the pandemic is to let people know, right, we went through the financial downturn in, in 2008 and terrorist attacks of, of 2001 and some of the challenges that even for those that have lived longer and have experienced things for that. But, you know, roughly every nine, 10 years, we go through as a society a major, major challenge, you know, that that makes people kind of rethink the way they do things. And I think the favor in that the upside of that is to understand you need to be planning for the challenges to come. It's not a question of if the challenges are going to come. It's just a question of when. What are you doing to prepare your bank account, to prepare your mental accounts, to prepare your body for the challenges to come? Mm -hmm. So, well, first of all, the the grit, we all have the ability to to build grit but you know we have to be in acceptance for where we are in our journey and be in uh, be in awareness you know to to build grit it's really about doing the hard things it's about for me you know uh, building grit is kind of like when i was growing up in texas and i ran track we had to condition ourselves so uh, we went out every day man it was 100 degrees and 100% humidity and but we conditioned ourselves five days a week. We were out on that track. And if we wanted to win the race, we couldn't just, you know, not practice and then go out there to the competition and expect to win. We really had to condition ourselves. Um, so I think being an athlete really taught me a lot about grit. Um, being a dancer taught me a lot about grit. Um, you know, I remember preparing for a show and I'd have blisters all over my toes from dancing in my point shoes. And I would say, but Miss Jackie, my, my toes, my toes are bleeding. And she'd say, well, the show must go on. So wrap your toes and keep going. And so those moments getting through, you know, tough times, running track, uh, being a dancer, and having to work hard, you know, I, I'm grateful for the way that I grew up. I, you know, I, I, I'll, I always thought, man, this isn't fair when I was growing up, you know, and I had friends whose parents bought them cars or who gave them money um, to do things or they had nice clothes. If I wanted something nice, I had to work for it. And it really taught me the appreciation of things. And so, and, 
the value that hard work pays off. And I, I think that your hard work puts you where your blessings can find you. But I think that, you know, grit, we've all learned a lot about grit in this past since the pandemic. But I think that grit, it, it, when we do hard things, it also builds our confidence that we're able to get through those situations. Um, I'm telling you, if you would have asked me, you know, four years ago, I would never in a million years would imagined I would be sitting here with you looking into a camera to connect with people. Thank goodness we can do these these things and connect with others and, and share how we get through hard things. But, you know, I was really intimidated and still get intimidated by technology and how to do things. And just by doing it, I'm big on notes. If you could see my desk right now, like my whole desk has these sticky notes and I think it's important to make a list to know what your goals are. And there's something so rewarding about checking those things off the list. But if you don't have a list or a plan or you don't know where you're going, then how are you going to get there? So it's building grit is every day showing up, starting where you are using what you have and doing what you can. And, you know, I, I think that you, you were talking about when you had to have your surgery, how you kind of stopped working out, you stopped doing your push-ups, And, and I knew for me that, well, the doctors thought I was a little crazy, I think, because in the hospital bed, I had asked them, I was like, I need a pull-up bar installed over the bed. So I know I can't stand up. I can't move. I've got to have my leg elevated. I had these steel rods that held my leg in place because my le leg was crumbled into pieces. But I thought if I can keep my upper body strong, then at least it's moving me in the right direction. So I had another friend bring me some dumbbells. And so I had some light dumbbells and in between surgeries, I was doing everything I could to stay strong, to build grit every single day. So I was doing it physically. I was doing it emotionally, mentally, spiritually, because I think to build grit, like you said, it's, it's not just the physical, but it is to build grit so we can have that endurance. And that's part of the PACER method too, because it's really when our passion and our perseverance come into play. It's really tapping into our why daily so we can stay, you know, have that motivation to keep moving forward. And it's been kind of like a marathon, this, the whole pandemic. And it's really, I think for me, remembering why I started because, um, you know, we've got a, a whole new world where I think a lot of us have learned how to do things virtually. Thank goodness for Zoom. I know a lot of people are sick of it, but I'm grateful for it because that's how I've been connecting through presentations, through, you know, all my virtual events went virtual instead. My clients, I still see, saw some clients in person. They're all virtual. So um, we just have to remember to move our bodies because I don't know about you, but Zumba is real. <laughs> I can so think of so many examples. I think Zoom Zoom Bud is a fantastic example of of the grit or lack thereof, right? You know, the idea that you know, and and it, it all adds up, right? Because if you're not exercising your upper body, you're still eating, right? And you're you're sitting in the hospital bed, and I I experienced this not being in a hospital bed, just being out and about, able to still walk on my knee, but. The idea that if you're not exercising, even though you may not want to exercise your knee or can't exercise your knee, now you're adding weight and you're adding challenges. And I think that is a great, great, great metaphor for so many different things. When you don't exercise those other things that you can exercise because you've let one little thing block you, now you've created challenges and it's going to require additional grit, additional effort, 
additional everything to get over this challenge that you're building instead of opening up doors of opportunity to yourself, instead of creating pathways to ease and excellence, you're creating challenges that you're going to then need to get over. I mean, I can, you can see it in the desk space, you know, you're piling stuff up on your desk. You're not preparing yourself for ease and, and excellence in the future. You're preparing yourself to have to spend time unnecessarily on things. So I think it's, it's applicable to so many pieces of life. So that daily exercise, building that grit, making sure that you're taking time and putting a plan in place. I, I, I love those bits of advice. All right. So let's, let's move on to um, how can you be more resilient in changing time? So I know you started going into this because we're, we're in changing times, but how can you be more resilient in changing times? Well, I, and I want to say too, just about exercising. I, and I think that it's important to move your body because it does move your mind. And, and it's so important. You know, I knew, thank goodness. I, I knew that if I could just move my body, it would make me feel better. And, you know, it wasn't like I was building all the, these muscles or biceps in the hospital bed, but I knew that it would, give me confidence and make me feel like I was going in the right direction. Um, and to be more resilient, you know, we got into the pacer method a little bit perspective. Acceptance is the next part where if you're not in acceptance, and that was so hard for me, I did not want to accept the fact that I had all these scars. I didn't want to accept the fact that I was out of work, that I had this nerve disease and I was in denial for a long time. And which was crazy because when we're not in acceptance, you know, I wasn't taking the medication I was supposed to take. I wasn't eating the right foods. It was kind of like being diagnosed with, you know, having diabetes and not taking your insulin. And so for me, when I was in complete acceptance for where I was on my journey, um, so I invite, that's when my life started to change. So I invite everyone to really take a good hard look at your life today and you know what that thing is because everything that you're doing is either moving you closer to your best self or moving the needle on your business forward it's either hurting you or harming you so i think in order to be resilient you really have to be in acceptance any part of, of any transformational journey or healing journey starts with acceptance and really owning and claiming who you are. So I invite you today to really take a good hard look at your life and make a list of things that you're doing. And are they really helping you or are they hurting you? And that could be everything from something you're doing in your business to the food you're eating to what you're watching on social media. Is it motivating you? Is it inspiring you? Or are you getting caught up in that comparison game? Are you being a constant consumer? Or are you being a creator? Are you stepping out of your comfort zone and putting yourself out there? Um, I think the next part of being resilient, and this might be the most powerful part of the PACER method is community. You know, I used to think that I had to do everything alone. Like I was like, if I want something, I just have to figure it out myself. And I tried doing it alone and it, it did not work for me. I needed to be able to ask other people. So whether you are on a healing journey and you're feeling alone in your pain, I promise you there's someone else out there going through the exact situation. And if you just reach out and ask for help, you're going to be able to get through, through those hard times. I mean, reach out to me. I'm happy to support you any way I can. And if you're an entrepreneur, no matter what level of success that you're at, you're starting out or things get bigger and you're always going to need to com communicate with people, to have a tribe of people who are like-minded and passionate. For me, I think that what has moved the needle on my business the most is being a part of a mastermind. And, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, it's so important to have good counsel, not necessarily opinions from other people, but good 
counsel from people who have paved the way before you. And so, um, I, and we talked a little bit about endurance. That's the next part of Pacer, endurance. And as an entrepreneur, it does take a lot of endurance. It, it takes that passion. And I would say that- For anybody that's had a business over this pandemic that hasn't benefited directly from the pandemic, you have needed a lot of endurance to get through this. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Right. And, and I, I think that it's really important to love what you do. And for me, I know that it took me years to build up uh, a business and my husband, I remember my husband kept saying, when are you going to start making money at this? I'm like, it takes time. It takes time. And good thing I loved what I did because it did take years to become mm -hmm. um, what looks like, you know, people sometimes see things on Instagram or, and they think, oh, wow, they're a best selling author. And they don't see the two years that it took to write the book or the the publishing journey that was the, the year long to get your book published or the figuring out how to work Instagram or ads or all that stuff. And so, yes, it does take endurance. And then I would just say the last part of Pacer is rest. And I think it's so important. You know, I didn't I didn't even want to add that to Pacer, but I learned over and over and over the importance of rest and recovery. And it's taking time because I could literally be on Zoom on my computer. I do. I don't know about you, but I get the weekly reports that will tell me how long I'm online. Okay. And it's 11 hours, 11 to 12 hours a day that I'm online. And so. I have timers set up that I will take a break, go outside in nature just to get a little bit of a reprieve. I've got a pull up bar in the doorway here. So in between Zooms, I'll do some pull ups. You're, you're, you're going to inspire me now. I got to go start doing more pull ups because I, <laughs> I could I couldn't get to, to the second or third pull up if I tried. <laughs> well, I'm, I didn't say I was good at it, but I keep trying. I keep going at it. But, you know, I think that recovery, being out in nature, when we're not rested, we don't have, we can't spark creativity. And so, you know, there are some times where I'm just a little brain dead or brain foggy. And if I go out and just take a breath, get in nature, get grounded, that creativity comes back. And so, you know, connect with other people who inspire you, but also, you know, do things that keep you motivated and take time to rest. For entrepreneurs, I think the value of rest, the value of sleep is so underappreciated. We're living in an environment where more people are working from home than ever before. And so we're running into these pieces where they're, you're just kind of working nonstop. The, the line between family life and work is, is so blurred. And I know for myself as an entrepreneur over the last 10 years to work at the desk until whatever time, because you get that quiet in the late night. So it's night. but if you don't get that rest, you can just feel like you're ever on the, uh, the hamster wheel, just running, running and not getting anywhere. And that rest is so, so important. And a lot of times you can get done in 15 minutes, what would have taken you four hours between the hours of uh, 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. <laughs> 5 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. You're so right. And you know what? My um, my 13 year old actually helped me with uh, mm -hmm. the the work life balance kind of thing, because <laughs> I moved my office. My office building shut down after COVID. And so I moved my office to home, my home. So you're right. It is. The line gets a little blurred. And one day I went downstairs and I was on my phone typing and my daughter was like, mom, mom, look at this. And I said, Ruby, I'm working. And she goes, well, if you're working, go back in your office. And I was like, oh, I got it. We're okay. Touche. But I learned something there is um, I do the most important things that are like top priority first thing in the morning. It, you know, even those things I don't really feel like doing that I have to get done. I, I, I change that to 
I get to do these things. Yeah. And so I'm like, it makes me feel Mind, a little mindset, like, mindset shift. Yes. Mindset shift. I do those things in the morning. And then when I'm at work or in, in, you know, I'm all in there. And when I'm with my family, I'm all in there. And in fact, for father's day, my daughter gave my husband some coupons. And one of the things was time together, no devices. And I was like, he, that was the first one that he handed me. I was like, okay, I'm offline. I'm all, I'm all here. I'm all present, you know, but it, it is as an entrepreneur, it can be, you know, there, you have to really set up your own hours and we teach people how to treat us. We teach people how quickly we're going to respond to something. We teach people when it's okay to message you, you know, um, and you know, this may sound kind of corny, but I have an alarm set on my phone that every night at 8 45, it reminds me it's time to get ready for bed. And then it, it blocks all my calls and messages, which my husband can't stand because if he's trying to call me and he's out, it goes directly to voicemail. So I have to change that. But I, I think it's really important and it, I keep track of how much sleep that I have because you know what, you're right. It could take, if we're not rested, our brains don't think it's like, I think they said that when we get little, like as four hours of sleep, it's like we're functioning like we're drunk. Mm. And so it might take us four times as long to, if we can get anything done when we're not rested versus when we're well rested, we are more efficient. And so I just can't stress enough to, you know, to, to listen to your body, get that rest. And, you know, I think it's about working smarter and not harder. And I had to learn the hard way about that because I would just hustle, hustle, hustle until I would end up in the emergency room. And it wasn't, you know, it was two years ago, being in urgent care the sixth time and having the doctor look at me and say, what are you doing? Mm. You have to take better care of yourself. And I was like, oh my goodness, I was prone to infections because of the circulation in my leg. And I really heard that and it scared me. And so now I really practice what I preach and rest. And I have not had to go back to urgent care, knock on wood. Since that doctor kind of shook me up and was like, what are you doing? So that's why I really can't say enough the importance of recovery and sleep and, you know, working smarter, not harder. I love that. And I, I think we lie to ourselves in so many different ways around this very topic of the idea of, oh, well, I need to get this work done and this is the only time that I can do it and blah, 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 right? Because we're thinking oh, I can't set my bedtime to seven o'clock at night so that I can wake up fresh in the early morning hours when everybody else is, because I got to stay up and watch a movie with somebody. Like we, we don't think through it all and figure out the right schedule for us because we don't want to be corny and we don't want to look the wrong way and afraid of judgment of our, from ourselves and from others. Uh, I think this is a great uh, segue into how do you cultivate self-love, develop a better relationship with yourself and others? Oh gosh, self-love was really tough for me. I did not love myself. In fact, I hate a four letter word in our family and, and I hated myself. I hated the way I looked. I hated that my leg didn't work properly. I hated that it gave me so much pain. Um, and something Dr. Don Wiss, actually, he's the man, the doctor who saved my leg. And I have to say, he really changed my life. And he's the one who really allowed me to start having some self-love again. And, and it was because, I don't know, I was in, in between surgery number, uh, maybe 26, 28. I don't know. It was up there. And I went in. And I had this brilliant idea. I was like, you know what? This leg just gives me so much pain. I appreciate all that you've done to save it. Um, but I need you to go ahead and amputate it. And he was like, we, we can't do that. You have a nerve disease and 
it could make it worse. That's not an option for you. But then he did something that really changed my life. He sat down in front of me and he put my leg in his lap. And my first thought was, oh my goodness, I can't believe he's putting my ugly leg on his nice white coat. Mm. And then he looked at it like it was a masterpiece. Like the way he looked at it was like, wow, this is the 1% chance leg that I saved. And something shifted in me. And I thought, if he can look at my leg that way, maybe I can learn to look at it that way too. And it wasn't easy, um, but it's possible. I started to view my leg um, so differently. I was grateful for all that it did, that it held me up, that I could walk on it for the way it was healing. I started to look at my scars as all that I had overcome and I had survived instead of broken and damaged and, and ugly. And so I think that self-love really is um, self-acceptance in the beginning, which turns to and leads you to loving yourself and appreciating all the things that you can do. Um, and I can say that, you know, once you are in acceptance and you start to get comfortable in your own skin, then it's freedom for me. You know, I've had people say, wow, I just, I'm amazed that you wear shorts and you're, you're not, you know, I've had somebody say, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. You're not embarrassed by the way your leg looks. And I thought, I'm proud of that my leg, that I still have my leg. I am proud that um, of these scars because it's a reminder of how powerful um, and resilient we really are, how much we can overcome and we can do more than survive. We can thrive. I love it. I, I love the mindset shift there. I mean, it's interesting the way that society looks at things. You know, there was a time if you were a male and you had a big tummy, and it's certainly true in, 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 in lots of <laughs> places a day. It was a sign of like, well, you're you're well taken care of. There's food on your table. And now we look at it a little bit differently. Now we look at it as, as unhealthy. And so if, if society can change their mind, right, we can certainly change our mind about any given thing. I think it's such a great way to look at it. And I think if we all looked at our own bodies as artwork and as a, the amazing things that they are, I mean, just, just going into your brain alone um, beyond any of the, the things that you can physically do, which just, again, we're, we're amazing creatures. I, I just want to put that out there because I think that's the message you're putting out there. And I want to sort of shout that from, from the Hilltop, certainly try to do that on this program every day to tell people how amazing they are, how much they have to give, how much you have to contribute. And so if we can sort of get over ourselves and, and love ourselves and appreciate all the amazing things that we bring to the table, we put ourselves in a position really to contribute and allow people to see the amazing pieces of our work that we are, whatever the the situation, the condition, the things that we can bring to the table that, that have so much to offer. I, I love that message. Um, I want people to uh, go out and buy the book. Uh, I think I just lost. Hopefully she'll, she'll come back in here, but uh, I, I want to encourage people to uh, by Amberly Lago's book. Tell us about the book again. I want to point people to that. I know uh, you have a podcast as well, right, Amberly? Yes, my podcast is called True Grit and Grace, and my book is True Grit and Grace. And you can find my book on, you know, Amazon's probably the easiest place to get it. Or thank goodness we can go to bookstores again. Um, but AmberlyLago.com is my website. I hang out mostly on Instagram at Amberly Lago Motivation. And I really encourage, you know, people to reach out. You can text me if you would like to uh, know more about how to build grit. You can text me the word grit, just G-R-I-T to 818-214-7378. And you'll get your downloadable free playbook um, because I'd love for people to be able to, you know, just use some of these 
tangible tools in their everyday life to continue to be resilient. And, and I love connecting with people. So please reach out if you, you know, if I can do anything to support you and, and I'm grateful to be here with you. I, I just appreciate you having me on your show and connecting with your amazing audience. So thank you so much. I'm, I was telling you before we started recording how amazed I am at all you do. Like I am really blown away. It's very inspiring to see you and, and, what you give, you give back in such a big way. So I'm so grateful that we connected and I, I'm grateful to be here with you today. I'm glad Steve connected us. And Marcy Jackson says, done, looking forward to buying your book. So we got somebody that's that's uh, that's been exposed and going to jump into to getting the book. Thanks, Marcy Jackson, for participating today and uh, jumping in. I, I meant to uh, uh, highlight this to you as well. Mary Jones was saying mindset is so important. I had to learn that self-care is not selfish, which was great as we were talking about it. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. I did include your LinkedIn uh, link there so that folks that are watching this on YouTube can go down into the comments, into the uh, description section, find that link there. If you're on Facebook or you're on LinkedIn, uh, you can just go to the side there. Definitely connect with Amberly. She is an amazing human being and definitely inspiring. Uh, I want to leave you with the last words, Amberly. So if I'll let, let you uh, leave, leave everybody with the nugget here and then just let everybody know, I think, uh, point out the website one more time and I'll play us off with the biz dev theme. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Please reach out. You're never alone. Um, always here to support you and just remind you that change is possible and hope is available. Please reach out to me um, at 818-214-7378. You can send me a text, get your free downloadable uh, playbook. Just text the word GRIT and reach out to me at amberlylago.com for more downloadable resources available to you. And the podcast, True Grit and Grace. I'd love to hear from you and love to have you listen to the podcast. And thank you again for having me here. Thank you, Amberly. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time Live. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time Leadership and motivation, motivation, empathy and inspiration, inspiration. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, business development, not even selling it. Biz D with C, brought to you by Cameron T, Cameron T. Biz D with C, brought to you by Cameron T, Cameron T. This is business development, not even selling it, not even selling it, not even selling this it. This is business development, not even selling it. Business development, not even selling it. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live.